So here I listed some of the benefits of Mimosa, but I would say let's just do an analysis uh, to get familiar with it. And what we will analyze is a data set by Goldstein. And this is a classic example of the use of mixed models because it's school data. So we have the dependent variable is a standardized exam score at age 16. And as an IV, we will use a reading test at age 11 as a random effect on level 1. This is the standardized London reading test. Um, this variable and also the DV, they are already uh, standardized. So we will get betters, better coefficients. And the second uh, IV is the school type, which is either a mixed school or single school. So single school would mean only boys or only girls. And this is level 2 variable, which we will use. The grouping variable is school. This is a unique identifier for each school. And if you're interested in this data set, it's available in the R package MLM ref. So you can play around with it. And here's also a short description of all the variables. So if you want to follow the analysis, just go to mimosa ICU slash example. To remember the general URL, you can think of Mimosa ICU. So just fire up a browser of your choice and type in Mimosa ICU slash example. This will load the example dataset. And here you can already see some of the benefits of using Mimosa. The first one is that the grouping variable is automatically detected. And the second one is that all variables are categorized into level 1 and level 2. So you don't have to do this um, on your own. Mimosa assists you in this uh, step. And this is not just for the example. You can load your own data set and it will categorize your variables and select the grouping variable. So there's not much left to do. The analysis just takes a couple of seconds. We select the DV and the IV. The IV we set on level 1 should be a random effect. And on level 2 we have school type. That's it. You get a nice publication ready output table which you can either save as an HTML file or you can just copy paste it into your word processing tool. Um, here I use LibreOffice and this is quite close to being publication ready. So just for the interpretation, um, the standardized London reading test at age 11 is a good predictor of the norm exam, which is um, a central test at age 16, a general test at age 16, and the school type, uh, single schools, just boys or just girls also perform better. And stand LRT and norm exam are already standardized, so this can be interpreted as a beta um, similar to a correlation. You also see the confidence intervals for these estimates, and here you also have the random effects, which are quite interesting if you're doing a mixed model. You also get the ICC and the number of um, observations in general. 4059 students and how many uh, groups you have it's 65 schools in this case and also important you get r squared there are two r squared in the mixed model and um, it's displayed here so i think this table is completely sufficient for a publication you get the estimates and you get the confidence intervals but if you cannot resist doing significance testing you can also select some more options. So there is even more here, but as said, uh, I believe that this is completely sufficient. Don't do statistical esoterics, just present the information that is required. On the right hand side, we have a model description. Let me just quickly move my uh, webcam so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here you have a mathematical description of the model on level 1 and level 2. And here you also have um, the R model formula for the LME4 package. So if you're using R, you could just copy paste this formula and use uh, the LME R function from LME4 and this will also work. And maybe you're just a beginner in R and um, later want to use LME4. So this would be an 
easy uh, transfer from Mimosa to um, LME4 because Mimosa is based on LME4 and some other great uh, packages, some great uh, R packages. All right, so I think the most innovative part of Mimosa is the categorization of the variables and the detection of the grouping variable. And some of you might wonder, how does this work? We can go back to the slides and I will try to explain how it works. So it's much easier to explain how the categorization in level 1 and level 2 works. And here I have 15 students from three different schools and I know that school is the grouping variable. And now I will check for every variable uh, if it varies within a school or not. And here I can see norm exam varies within a school, so it's on level 1. And school gender does not vary within a school, so it must be on level 2. This I can do for every variable and it works perfectly, so Mimosa always correctly identifies variables into level 1 or level 2. Finding the correct grouping variable is more difficult. Um, there is some pre-filtering going on and then um, Mimosa checks how many level 2 variables would be created. And so, for instance, if I try out type as a grouping variable, I will find that um, there are no level 2 variables. So this makes it very unlikely that type is the correct grouping variable. In fact, only school and school gender can be grouping variables for this data set. And Mimosa defaults to school because there are more levels um, of school, 65 schools, than of school gender, only three mixed girls or boys. So although there is some ambiguity in the data, Mimosa correctly identifies the grouping variable and categorizes the variables into level 1 and level 2 correctly. And this type of assistance you will not find in other software, but of course there are um, many alternatives and uh, some of them are good, so we can talk about this. Um, I would not recommend proprietary software um, because of the aforementioned reasons. Uh, if you want to do open science, if you want to collaborate, you should use uh, free software. So you should be able to look at the source code, modify it, and uh, redistribute the software. And this type of freedom is provided by two great tools, JASP and Jamovi. And um, I can recommend them also for mixed models, but they are not so much focused on usability because they have um, a different goal. So they are more general purpose um, to be a replacement for SPSS, whereas Mimosa focuses on a single method, on two-level mixed models. And this makes Mimosa very specialized, and so it can provide some convenience functions and a great output, because it's always the same output, it's always uh, a two-level mixed model. And this kind of specialization also led me to name it Mimosa, if you want to do your mixed model analysis, your two-level mixed model analysis like James Bond, then you can use the mixed model special agent.